In the summer of 2022, members of our seminary faculty were given the opportunity to visit Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai is located in a desert region known as the Sinai Peninsula in Egypt. It is famously where the prophet Moses received the Ten Commandments from God. Going on this trip would be Archimandrite Gregory, who is the Old Testament lecturer at the seminary. Mount Sinai is a very important location in the Old Testament, which is why it was important for our Old Testament lecturer to see the location for himself. The Monastery of St. Catherine goes back to the early centuries of Christian monasticism. It's the oldest continuously functioning monastery in the world. It's got a small brotherhood now, but it's a very, how do you say, very active place actually, more active than I thought it would be. St. Catherine's Monastery is a very ancient place, and its library is the oldest continually operating library in the world. We were very grateful to be given a tour by the librarian, Father Justin. And the major purpose of this building was to have a better place for the icons and for the manuscripts. So everything was moved here in 1951. In 1951, there's no electricity. The first generator was installed in 1958. And in 2017, we finished the present building. So that's why it all looks new, but it's the building stripped back to the core and then built out again. This apse was built into the wall when they made the wall in the 6th century. So we know that from the 6th century, there's been a chapel here. We have 3,300 manuscripts. The original library had manuscripts at the balcony level because it was felt that they were more secure up there. There's no longer room for all the early printed books in all the different languages, so what you see above are the Greek early printed books. We have about 8,000, and they're amazing collections. Um, Church Fathers, Philikalia, and on and on and on. And they arrange uh, the Fathers, and then history, classical Greek, lexicons, Acts of the Church Councils, scriptures, service books, and then you always have miscellaneous. <laughs> an asymmetry to his face, so you have the one pupil that looks past you and one pupil that looks at you. The one that's looking past you represents the mercy of God because he looks past your sins, and the other pupil looks directly at you, showing the judgment of God. So if you don't know Christ as being merciful to you in this life, you will know his justice in the next life, his judgment in the next life. So it combines the two aspects of God, his mercy and his justice. So he's both the Redeemer and the Judge in this icon. Mother Agape, how many times have you climbed the mountain? I think three times. Twice I've gone with sort of groups of a large number of people, but one time it was the end of February, and there was only one other nun, a monk from here, Father Nilas, and two Colombians who were part of the Sinai military forces. So we were basically alone up there, and it was, February, it was beautiful, but it was really a very special experience, and it's sort of like, can't talk I want to remember that. that. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, we were pretty much there alone, up on the top. Yeah. Well, from being here at Mount Sinai, I really like seeing the unburned bush, where Moses first encountered God. St. Gregory of Nyssa says that he first encountered him as light at the unburned bush. And then when he first came uh, to Mount Sinai with the Israelites, he encounters him as cloud, which is a mixture of light and darkness. And then finally, in his next encounter with God, he encounters him as darkness. St. Gregory paradoxically calls a luminous darkness or a dazzling darkness, which indicates the incomprehensible and invisible nature of God. Um, the expression that St. Gregory uses is um, um, seen by not seen. The title, St. Moses the Godseer, the Godseer is, is quite a bold title actually. Um, but being here in the place where St. Moses actually encountered God has been 
um, very illuminating, let's put it that way. The sun would go down and the moon would rise up, which meant it was time to begin the three mile long hike to the top of Mount Sinai. The road to the summit of Mount Sinai is known as the Camel Trail, a trail that has a steady and at times steep incline. The last half mile of the trail requires hiking up what is known as the 750 steps. It was a beautiful sight. Being a monastic from America, Skimenen of Proxia, our New Testament instructor at the seminary, never thought she'd see Sinai for herself. Now, have you ever had aspirations to come to Mount Sinai before, or this is... Nope. Because I just, I didn't really ever think it would happen, so I didn't really think about it. I'm really excited that it happened, but I never really thought about it before. It was just a special place somewhere off in the distance. And actually, it's really hard to believe that we're here. I haven't... Like my mind hasn't really caught up with the fact that we're here. St. Gregory of Sinai once wrote, On your path of obedience to the commandments, seek the Lord in your heart. When you listen to John crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Understand by these words commandments for the heart, as well as for actions. For it is impossible rightly to follow the commandments and to do rightly unless the heart too is right.